name's Liz, I'm the baker that sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you're a subscriber. As always, it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey. So I love talking about fabric and patterns and things that I've sewn, things that have been inspiring me. And um, so if that is something that sounds interesting to you, then please do make sure that you've hit that subscribe button because then you'll get notified of when I bring out my next video. So I'm back today with one of my Sunday sewing catch ups and we are on episode 17. Quick check to make sure that I've got the number correct. Um, and this week, I think it's going to be a fairly short video. I've got a few things written down to share with you, um, but it's been a super busy week with school. And then I've also had um, a market this weekend. So it's meant that I've been really busy and I haven't actually had a huge amount of sewing time. So I've been um, cutting out um, garments ready to sew next week. Uh, next week? No, the week after. I've got one more week of school and then it's half term. So I have been sort of making notes of things that I want to get sewn up in half term. But in terms of actual sewing this week, there's been teeny weeny amounts um, across the week. And then I managed to do a little bit of sewing this morning, um, which has meant I've managed to sew up one thing. So I've got that to share with you. Um, I've got a couple of pieces of fabric. Um, I've got some sewing plans, which I can share with you. And then there's a sewing initiative that I wanted to talk about. Um, so before I dive in with all of those things, I'll let you know what I'm wearing. And this is a Tabitha t-shirt. I think I've shared this before, made in this amazing cotton spandex um, fabric that I got from First for Fabrics. It's got these um, rainbows all over it, grey background and clouds and love hearts that are all different rainbow colours. Um, this fabric was given to me, no obligation to share, um, but I made a t-shirt for myself and I made a matching one for Ruby. I'll pop picture in so you can see what we both look like together. Um, so I've just got that on with my Anna Allen Pomono trousers because it seems to be the only thing that I'm enjoying wearing at the moment. Um, and these are just in this baby pink corduroy fabric. So I've got the usual two patch pockets on the back. It's got that elasticated waistband. They're quite high waisted, but there's lots and lots of room and they're just really, really comfortable. So I seem to be choosing to wear this sort of outfit at the moment. And then I've got a couple of Freya t-shirts that are long sleeve. So when I go to school, I pop those on because they're nice and cosy and because I spend a lot of time outside in the garden. Uh, so I've got two things to talk to you in terms of what I've been sewing this week. I know I said just one, but I've got an alteration which I touched on a few weeks ago. So I'll let you know about that too. Um, so I talked about using the leftovers of this gorgeous cotton. Um, it was a viscose jersey fabric that I got from uh, Rainbow Fabrics in this sort of pumpkin colourway with the flowers all over. Just love this colour. It's beautiful and autumnal and autumn is my favourite time of the year. So I'd sewn up a Freya t-shirt with a, a mock turtleneck um, neckband and then long sleeves and I've worn that loads. Um, and I had some of this left and I turned it into one of my favourite patterns, um, the Friday Pattern Company Westcliff dress, but I've done the short version. And I think I will layer it up with a long sleeve t-shirt and then um, thick woolly tights and ankle boots. And I think I'll wear it um, as an autumn winter dress. It's absolutely beautiful. So it's got um, the gorgeous sort of faux crossover detail. I've included ties like I like to do and I wrap that around the front. And then, yeah, it's got the shorter skirt, which finishes at your knee. I just adore that fabric. Um, if I manage to get photos of me wearing this, then I will pop images in for you so you can see what it looks like. Um, but I absolutely adore this pattern. I've sewn it so many times. I've made a couple of the maxi versions, but then I also really love this version. And I'm really excited about trying to layer this up um, to wear in my autumn winter wardrobe. I just love the colour of that fabric. I think it's absolutely beautiful. And because it's a jersey fabric, it'll be super comfortable to wear as well. Um, so the Westcliff dress is a pattern by the Friday Pattern Company. It comes in sizes extra small to 4X. Um, I normally sew up a small, which is a bust measurement of 34 to 35 inches, and it fits me really nicely across the bust. 26 to 27 inch waist for a small and then the hips are 35 to 36 inches so in terms of fabric recommendations they recommend um, it's perfect for knit fabrics of all kinds but you need at least 25 percent stretch and there's a stretch percentage guide included if you choose a knit with more body like a ponty it'll have a more structured modern look and if you sew it in a drapier knit like a rayon jersey it'll have a more romantic look I absolutely love this dress, as I keep on saying. Um, it's really straightforward to sew up. It's got this really interesting yoke detail um, on sort of where the shoulder bit is. And you kind of 
gather, you can just about make out those gathers, you gather the fabric into the yoke and it's a really lovely little detail that you get on that shoulder detail. It's got short sleeves but I think with a long sleeve top underneath it'll be absolutely fine for the colder months too. And then you have this um, sort of band that you attach to the neckline and that goes all the way inside the bodice and then on the other side too. Um, I always sandwich the waist ties at the waist seam so there's the skirt and the bodice and there's the side seam of the skirt can you just make that out there so I sandwich the um, ties just at the side seam um, for both of them and I usually wrap the ties around my back and then tie at the front into a little bow um, you, there is an option so they don't say add ties but there is an option to have a belt as you can see on the model there um, but I just prefer to have them sewn into the side seams I feel like it's a bit more secure so that's the only garment that I've really got sewn up this week. Um, I have been super busy baking, so I did lots and lots of baking on Friday night. So I put some images in so you can see some of the cupcakes and brownies and things that I got baked. So I have been busy making, but not necessarily sewing. And then I talked about this Davenport dress that I've got in this gorgeous sateen fabric that I got from a Fabric Godmother Dream Wardrobe box. So I'd sewn it up, but I was finding that I wasn't really reaching for it because I was finding that the, um, oh, I've got a thread there, I need to chop that from where I did the alteration. Um, I was finding where the elastic was for their sleeve, it was just a little bit too tight on my arms. So I ended up unpicking it and then inserting um, more elastic, but just um, not as tight. And it's definitely a lot more comfortable on my arms. And I've actually worn it a few times as well. It just fits, if I just pull it on over there, it just feels a bit, less sort of restrictive it was really not cutting off the circulation on my arms but it was feeling quite tight and I'm much happier with the way that that feels on my arm now so I'm definitely going to make sure that I reach for that so that was quite a straightforward fix I don't know what took me so long to unpick it I just unpicked the casing on the inside took out the old elastic um, and then re-measured the elastic on my arm for what would be comfortable popped it back in stitch it back up and hey presto, a dress that I am hopefully going to reach for more and more now because it's a little bit more comfortable. So that was quite a satisfying fix because I didn't have to sew the whole garment. I just had to tweak it a little bit. So that's all I've had time for this week. I was hoping to sew up my Anna Allen Anthea blouse in the blue needle punch fabric from Felicity Fabrics, but I just haven't got around to sewing that up at all. I've got a couple of Freya sweaters cut out ready to go, so I'm hoping I'll get some time today to sew those up because I've got a skirt that I sewed up in a pink um, needle cord that's got crowns all over it and I haven't got a top to go with it. I did have a navy jumper but I accidentally shrunk it in the wash um, so I need to make a navy just a plain navy jumper that I can wear with all the different things that I've got in my wardrobe so the Freya jumper is from the Tilly and the Buttons stretch book um, and you can turn it into a dress or you can just use it to make the jumper I'm just going to find the pattern um, in here so here's the sweater um, so this is what I'm going to be sewing up with this neckband, the long sleeves, and I am going to do long sleeves, even though I've talked about this before, um, I am going to sew long sleeves, even though I don't like, I tend to roll my sleeves up, but as a base layer, when I'm at work, I definitely need long sleeves just to keep me cosy and warm. So I'm just going to sew up a couple of those, here are the line drawings, just so you can see. So I've got one to sew up in a mustard jersey, and I've got one to sew up in a... I think it's a grey and then I've got a navy jersey and they should be quite straightforward because I can sew them up on my overlocker and then just top stitch on my regular machine so I'm hoping I'll have a couple of jumpers that I can share with you next week when I do my Sunday sewing catch up um, so the next thing that I wanted to share is two pieces of fabric that I've been buying the first one is by Hey So Sister and they shared this a few weeks ago and I absolutely loved it um, but they've been on holiday so they hadn't got around to putting it on their website as soon as it went on the website and I saw Georgie share on Hey So Sister stories over on Instagram that they'd put it on there, I went and grabbed myself some. So I'm just going to grab it. It's this amazing um, needle cord. So it's like a fine needle cord. Um, it's not a very heavyweight or chunky needle cord. Um, it is quite lightweight. There's not a huge amount of drape to it because it's a needle cord, but I just absolutely adore this print and I think it's going to make an amazing pair of trousers I think you can probably guess what pattern I'm going to use and um, but that is the pattern I love all of those colors it's quite abstract 
and I think it will make a really fun pair of trousers to wear to work. And the pattern that I'm going to use is the pattern that I'm wearing today, which is the Anna Allen Pomono Pants. And what I'm going to do is what I did with the last pair that I sewed up, which I shared last week in my Sunday Sewing Catch Up. I made um, a tiny little paper bag waist, so I'm going to do the same with this. Um, and the way that I did that was I just used a narrower elastic for the waistband casing. Um, and then I sewed on the waistband. You normally just sew um, like a two inch waistband and then you insert the elastic. Um, and what I did on my last pair was I stitched an inch, uh, not an inch, I stitched a centimetre at the top of the waistband. And then I did the usual two inch waistband and it just created this gorgeous little like paper bag waist. And I think that's going to look adorable. Um, I think that's going to look really cute in this fabric. So that's what I'm planning to do with this fabric. And I've got firm plans. It needs to go in the wash and then I can cut them out. Um, but I'm really excited about sewing those up. And then the other fabric I am equally as excited about. I absolutely love it. It's from Fabric Godmother. Um, and I've wanted a quilted fabric for ages because I want to make myself like a puffer jacket. Um, this is amazing. It is right up my street. It's shiny, rainbow, pastel -y, just amazing quilted fabric. I'm going to grab it so you can see what it looks like. But I've already sat. I don't know if you do this, but I do this when I get new fabric. I obviously get it out and admire it and just think, wow, you're amazing. But I sat with this around me just for ages, just in my front room. And it is so cozy and warm. It's just like a blanket and it's exactly what I need for school in the winter. So I'm really excited about turning this into a like puffer jacket type thing. So I got a metre and a half of it. I know I definitely want to turn it into some kind of puffer jacket. I don't know what pattern and I asked in my um, Instagram stories last week for pattern suggestions but if anyone's got a pattern suggestion for this incredible fabric look how fun is that so it's quilted so it's got a layer of wadding inside it's got this amazing like shiny fabric on the outside which is like um, a rainbow effect it's so cool and then on the inside it's just lilac and I think it's just going to be so cosy and warm. What I'm imagining in my head, I haven't seen a pattern, but what I'm imagining is this really cute, fairly cropped puffer jacket that I think I want to stop. So when I um, cut it out, I'd like a pattern that stops sort of about here or maybe there where the pomono pants finish. And then what I'd really like to use is some ribbing for the cuffs and the hem band and then also for the neck band. Um, and then probably... What I think I'd like to do is have a zip. That's what I'm imagining in my head. I haven't seen a pattern that ticks all of these boxes for me. But if anyone's got a suggestion of a pattern that sounds like that. So I want it to be a puffer jacket style um, where I can put um, a cuff on the sleeves. Um, and then I want it to stop sort of just below my natural waist. Um, so I can put um, cuffing on the bottom and then the same on the neckband. I don't know if there's a pattern out there that fits that description. I want to use as much of this amazing fabric as possible. I just think it's incredible. And I don't really want to distort that pattern too much either. So I don't know if I'm asking for too much in terms of what I want from the pattern. Um, but I think when I see the right pattern, I'll know that that's what this is destined to become. I think they've still got some of this fabric left. So if they have, I'll link it down below for you so you can go and grab some if you want to be twinning with the most amazing rainbow puffer jacket. Um, but it's just such a fun fabric. It made me smile as soon as I saw it and then I was really excited for it to arrive in the post too. So I'm very, very excited about making this, turning this into some kind of cool jacket. Um, yeah, and just embracing the rainbow at school as well. I think it'll be really fun. Um, so those are the only two fabrics that I've got to share with you this week. Let me grab my notebook and see what else I wanted to share with you. Oh, the next thing I wanted to share was something that's equally as exciting. And I've seen lots of these popping up over on Instagram where people have done pre-orders. Um, and it is the advent calendar, which is the labels by Kylie and the machines. So they've released an advent calendar. So it's a countdown for whatever you want it to be. So I've seen people saying that they're going to be using it for birthday countdowns. Halloween countdowns, whatever you want it to be. Some people have started opening them already. I haven't. I've undone the bow, but this is what it is. It's absolutely amazing. And then when you open it up, 
it's an advent calendar um, with doors, with numbers on, and I'm definitely saving it for a Christmas countdown. Um, I'm allergic to chocolate. I think I've talked about this before over on my channel. Um, I can't eat chocolate at all. It makes me really poorly. Um, so I've never really experienced the excitement of like an advent calendar where you get your chocolate. They've started doing sweetie advent calendars a few years ago, and I love sweets, so that was great for me. Um, but when I saw this advent calendar, I just, just thought, what a brilliant idea, and it's something that I'll be really excited about opening the doors um, every day in the build-up to Christmas, and I absolutely love Christmas too. I'm always super excited about it, so I'm really looking forward to having an advent calendar that's exciting to open, um, and I can join in with the excitement of my family when they open their advent calendars. Um, so it says the ultimate gift for the home sewist, new designs from Kylie and the Machine. There's um, 66 polyester woven labels included. Um, and then there's also two iron on patches, which is really exciting, actually. Um, so that's what the back looks like. That's what the front looks like. So it's a countdown to holidays, birthdays or whatever you decide to count down to. And then I'll show you the inside again just so you can see what it looks like. It's so fun. I can't wait to open them. And I've already looked at where the number one is. It's very exciting. Um, oh, I've lost it now. Where is number one? There. That's number one, the window. So I'm very excited about that. Um, so maybe in my Sunday sewing catch-ups, I'll let you know what I've opened behind all the different doors when I start filming them around Christmas. Um, I think there's lots of different places that have still got them left. So I know, I think Simi Sunshine had some. I think Like So Amazing had some. Fabric Godmother had some left. Um, I think there's other places that had them too, maybe Satisfaction. So if I find any UK stockists, I'll link them below. Um, and then I'll also find stockists, if I can, for overseas. And I'll link it in the description below so you can go and check them out. But I'm very excited. I've put it in my sewing space. I'm resisting the urge to open it yet. And I'm going to wait for a Christmas countdown. Um, but yeah, it feels very nice to have an advent calendar that I can get really excited about opening. So the next thing I wanted to share with you was the sewing initiative over on Instagram. I know I've shared lots of different sewing challenges, um, but I really like the idea of this initiative. And it's um, been started by the lovely Claire, who is the underscore stitch underscore bandit over on Instagram. I'll link her page down below so you can go and check her out. Um, but she started something called hashtag my sewing story. And the idea behind it is um, the fact that our grids over on Instagram, our pages are not just to um, share new makes. We don't always have brand new things to share. So the idea behind it is getting out some of those older makes and sharing them again, but also going back through sort of your history with that project um, and sort of reflecting on, I guess, the process of making it whether you wear it now, if you've had to make any tweaks to the pattern, what you learned, I guess, when you were sewing it, whatever you want to, but basically sharing older makes um, and um, just reflecting on the process and that make. So I have actually shared something. I shared something today and that was my sew over it cocoon coat, which I made in a green, like an emerald green melt and wool. And it was the first coat I ever made. I learned so much sewing with it. Number one, because it was my first time sewing with wool. Number two, it was my first coat. And number three, it was my first fully lined coat as well. And I learned so much with that process. I love getting this coat out in the winter, in the autumn winter, because it's a wool coat, so it is quite warm. Um, it goes with so many things that I've got in my wardrobe. It matches my hair. I'll put a picture in of me wearing it. Um, but it makes me smile as well when I dig out that coat, because I just remember the process of learning so much when I was going through it. So I absolutely love when it comes to getting that coat out. So I've already shared my first um, sewing history story over on Instagram. And um, so Claire's really encouraging us to look back on our makes over time and just do some reflecting and sort of recognise and acknowledge that our grids aren't always full of shiny and new garments. Um, but we can reshare the older makes and just reflect on our journey with those older makes too. And I'm definitely going to get into the habit of sharing some of my older makes even though that they're they're already on my grid i'm just going to reshare photos as well and just reflecting on that too particularly around anything where i've had to make adaptations to it like my davenport dress and um, i had to tweak the elastic on the sleeve cuff so i might reshare that and just talk about my my sort of journey with that garment already 
So the final thing I wanted to share um, was some of my sewing plans. So I've always got lots and lots of things on the go. I've got my Anthea blouse that I'm in the process of sewing. And like I said, a couple of Freya jumpers. But I've got some gorgeous green corduroy that's been in my stash for longer than I wanted it to. In this beautiful green colourway. And I'm going to turn this into, I've got two options. Either my favourite pattern at the moment, which is the Anna Allen Pomono pants. So that's one option because I've got loads of tops. I'm thinking about the, um, oh, where's it gone? I'm thinking about this fabric where I've got my Freya top. I think it would go so nicely with the pair of trousers. So I'm either going to turn it into the Pomono pants or I'm going to turn it into a pair of Helen's Closet Yanta overalls. Now I've got plans for quite a few pairs of Yanta overalls in different corduroy. So I'm more inclined at the moment to turn this into some Pomono pants. So I might get those cut out later on today because this has been pre-washed um, and I just love the colour of that corduroy. I think it's going to be a great addition to my autumn winter wardrobe. And then the other thing that I'm hoping to start cutting out this week and maybe get sewn up in half term, the latest So Holy Jane box has arrived. I've already done my unboxing video, I just haven't published it yet. So look away if you subscribe to So Holy Jane and you haven't received your box or you don't want any spoilers. Um, but it's a double gauze fabric that has arrived that's got these cute butterflies all over it and I've got the blue colourway. It's like a cornflower blue. Um, so I've talked before about double gauze not really being a fabric that I enjoy wearing myself or sewing with for myself. I don't enjoy it as a fabric to wear and I don't enjoy it as a fabric to sew. So this is not going to become something for myself but instead I've got a couple of friends um, who have had babies, um, little girls. So I'm looking forward to using this fabric to sew up some clothes for them. So I'd like your recommendations, please, if possible, of some children's patterns. So they're both newborn, but I'll probably end up sewing something for, for sort of six months onwards um, of children's patterns that are specifically suitable for a double gauze fabric. So if you could let me know in the comments, I'd really appreciate it. If you've sewn up baby clothes using double gauze, and you've got a pattern that you would recommend to me, I'd really appreciate your help. I've got a couple of baby patterns in my stash, um, but I'm not sure if they're suitable for double gauze. I was thinking maybe of sewing up like a romper or maybe a little dress using the double gauze. Um, so it'd be great to get some suggestions of the fabric. It's in this gorgeous sort of blue colourway with the butterflies all over it. I just know it's not something that I would wear myself and I don't think my girls would wear something out of this fabric either. So I'm going to turn it into baby clothes and gift it onto a couple of friends that have had babies too. So those are a couple of my ideas that I've got swimming around in my mind. Um, the final thing to say before I go is I am going to film a Q&A over half term. So in a week and a half's time, I'll probably sit down to film my Q&A. So if you've got any burning questions that you would like to ask me, then leave them in the comments below. I've already had quite a few on my previous Sunday sewing catch up. So it'd be really great to get your questions. Um, it can be about anything. It can be about sewing. It can be about absolutely anything. So please just ask away and I will include that in my Q&A when I film it in about a week and a half's time. Thank you so much for watching my Sunday sewing catch up. If you've enjoyed this video, then please do give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, then please do hit that subscribe button um, and I'll be back soon with another video. Take care. Bye.